parental advisory, explicit content. Please put the women and kids to bed. Or women and kids, please put your sheeple ass husband and father to bed. You've been warned. All right, y'all. I'm here to ask the tough questions that a lot of you guys are probably too pussy to ask because you're afraid that somebody might say something to you. But guess what? The next time I care about what another man thinks about football would be the first. I only care about my own opinions and analysis because I know I'll put in the work and I'm knowledgeable and unbiased with mine. All right? So with that being said, I love Jeff Okuda. I don't want nobody to mince words behind it. I love Jeff Okuda, the prospects of him. I think he's going to be lights out You like you wouldn't believe. He's going to be a very good NFL player. But why, with in comparison to A.J. Terrell, why is he given the benefit of the doubt, whereas A.J. Terrell is continuously vilified? Uh, people will question every single thing that he does. But Jeffrey Okuda got to get away with a whole lot of stuff, and there's a whole lot of questions to be answered from Jeff Okuda, in my opinion. All right? All right, so let's check it out right here. Now, I'm not saying that Jeff Okuda should, should not have been picked ahead of AJ Terrell. If that's your cup of tea, I'm cool with it, right? I just want to know how did we arrive to that, right? Are we sheeple? I'm not a sheeple. Are you guys sheeple, right? Do you guys – take the entire spectrum of what's going on or do you just be like, hey, the media says something, let me roll with it. So let's look at Jeff Okuda, right? 6'1", 205, 32 and 5 eighths arms, uh, 9, 1 eighth hands, first round pick, the third overall pick. Dope. Dope as hell. Let's see him right here. Ran a 4'4", 40-yard dash, 11 on the bench, 41 vert, 135 broad. Pretty cool, right? Same thing here for A.J. Terrell. Six foot one, 195 pounds, 10 pounds lighter, 31 and one fourth arm, nine inch hands. 16th overall pick to the Atlanta Falcons. Hometown kid coming back home, about to get it in. All right, let's check this out. Ran a 4-4-2, right? A 4-4-8 compared to a 4-4-2. And I will say this as well. He consistently ran at the combine. Both reps were the same, right? He had a they, it was four four three on the TV unofficially on both times, but four four two was his official time. Fifteen on the bench press, thirty four vert, one hundred twenty nine broad. And check this out from Jeff Rokuda, who I have questions about his long speed. The second attempt was a four five zero, so you got a four four eight and a four five zero against a guy who ran both times ran a four four three officially a four four two. And this is a guy, if you look up and down his schedule as a one-season starter, you see no dynamic QB wide receiver combinations outside of perhaps the last game against A.J. Terrell's team. Keep that in mind, a QB wide receiver combination that he sees every day in practice. So that's his best. So if we go here, as his one season as a starter, right, FAU. Negative. Cincinnati, negative. Indiana, I'm sorry. Miami, Ohio, get real. Nebraska. Nebraska is where he made his name, right? He made his name off of a couple of interceptions in Nebraska against inferior talent. All right, matter of fact, let's check it out. All right, so keep in mind, he has three career interceptions. Two came in this very game against Nebraska and one against Miami of Ohio. Now, check this out. You got... Of course, Chase Young flushing the pocket right here with um, Adrian Martinez. Might be Taylor Martinez for all we know. We don't know what's going on in Nebraska, but check this out. Is this really on Okuda? Is uh, is this really a great play by Okuda, right? It's not a bad play. Anytime you make a play out there in the football game, I don't poo-poo it because guess what? None of us are making plays out there in college football right now. So I had some lame-ass Quaker oat looking motherfucker tell me one time, and he was talking about A.J. Terrell's interception. He was like, he didn't do nothing. I'm like, oh, what? The shit against Alabama, but we'll get to that. But check this out right here. So now look, this is a terrible pass. Suppose Adrian Martinez had thrown this ball out and let his guy run it, right? Run under it right here. I'm sorry, run to it, right? Led him. He threw it behind him where Jeffrey Okuda has momentum. Check this out right here. This guy has to stop his feet. He has to stop his feet because the ball is behind him. But Okuda already has the momentum. He threw it right to Okuda. He threw it right to him. If you want to say anybody threw something to somebody, he threw it right to him. It wasn't like he closed on this. It was a bad throw. But he made the play. So I have no 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 qualms about that. He made the play. No doubt about that. He made the play. But, like, come on now. <laughs> Let's be real about this. And here's the other one, right? Now, 
you'll see Jeffrey Okuda right here on his man. Of course, Martinez getting his uh, lineman pushed right up into his lap. Bad throw. Bad throw. He ends up selling this, right? He's selling this. And look, I don't know where this ball is actually supposed to go. It look, it's actually was going to this guy right here, right? So he's on his man right here, and he's slipping and falling, trying to get back to the ball. So he's on his back. It's an overthrow, and he throws it. It's tipped right to him. He's on his back. It wasn't even his man. And he's going buck wild over this, and so is everyone else. Like, I don't understand. I, I, <laughs> I do not understand this. Check it from this angle right here. Here you go. You can see it a little bit better. Throwing it to the number one again, and you're having a bad game. Number one. Look, number one, suppose he catches this, right? So if number one catches this, let's just say that word, say, mm, Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase probably catches this ball. Okuda's falling on the ground. He probably gets his head stomped on by Jamar Chase running into the end zone. Actually, that's Wondell Robinson right there. He's a very dynamic receiver, but as you see, Okuda's not even guarding him, right? He's a, more of a slot guy. But did he make this play? That's luck, if anything. That's uh, – I don't like the call. That's luck. I'm sorry. That's luck. He's on the ground. The ball was tipped to him. That's two of his interceptions, two of his three career interceptions as a one-year start. Here's the third before we get back into the schedule. So, all right, you'll see this. This is Miami of Ohio. The quarterback is trying to throw the ball to this guy right here, and he sells it. Okuda, you can see coming right here, this is his man. He's in zone. Ohio State plays a ton of zone, so he's working vertically, right? He has great zone awareness. I'll give him that. But check this out. This wasn't some type of man play. Actually, look at it. I think the ball is tipped. Yeah, it looks like it's tipped. Yeah, it's tipped. I don't know. It's He's put it this way. It's an overthrow, right? And he's trying to get it to this man. And here's Okuda's man. He keeps working vertically. And he just throws it right to Okuda. That's his, that's the, those are his three interceptions for his entire career. Three years. Um... I'm confused, very confused by this, right? Especially, and this is only in comparison to AJ Toro with people downing him, right? As a two-year starter and somebody who's played much better competition, right? Much more dynamic receiver and wide receiver, quarterback and wide receiver combinations, all right? All right, so let's get back into this schedule here. Michigan State, not a good offensive team, not a good quarterback. Uh, the best receiver, I think is Daryl Stewart, right? I would say Daryl Stewart is Michigan State's best receiver, and what is he, like a, a 700-yard receiver? He doesn't have help, and he's not some type of dynamic athlete either, right? He's a bigger, slower type guy, in my opinion. All right, so Wisconsin. Wisconsin has hmm, Wisconsin has a guy in Quintez Cephas who I thought was was like kind of a burner guy, but I don't know. He man ran a 4-7, right? Quintez Cephas, Cephas ran a 4-7 at the NFL Combine. That works right in Jeffrey Okuda's favor, right? Because I don't know how fast Jeffrey Okuda is, right? But it's not like he guarded Quintez Cephas and shadowed him or anything like that. And it's not like Quintez Cephas is some type of uh, superstar, right? I mean, he was a fifth or sixth round draft pick. He's a good player. I'll give him props for that. He played him twice. But one of the games, Quintez Cephas, the, the second game they played him in the, in the championship game, Quintez Cephas went for like 130 yards. If Jeffrey Okuda is that, that dude, why wouldn't they have him stop Quintez Cephas? That would be the end of Wisconsin. For real. But it is what it is, right? So Maryland, nope. Rutgers, nope. Penn State, yes. K.J. Hamler is that type of receiver that is all the rage right now. If we think thinking about guys in the NFL, that's why guys are getting drafted like Henry Ruggs and, and Jerry Judy and all these guys are a little bit more dynamic, right? K.J. Hamler fits that. Tyreek Hill, all these guys like that. Jamar Chase, he's the epitome of that. He is the best wide receiver in all of college football. And if he were allowed to come out this year, I think he would have been the first wide receiver taken. He's NFL ready. And that's what we judge A.J. Terrell on. Uh, solely, only solely judging him on that one game where he shadowed the very best guy. He shadowed him for an entire half, right? And I'd be remiss to not point out that that boogeyman, Jamar Chase, also had the number one overall pick in the draft throwing him the football. Same thing with seeing A.J. Terrell against Alabama. He had Tua, the number five overall pick in the draft, Throwing the ball to Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, two first-round draft picks, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, two first-round draft picks when they come out next season. Like, come on, man. 
All right, so I wanted you to check this out, right? This is the difference, right? This is KJ Hamler, right? So on third down, Okuda would slide to the slot and face K KJ Hamler on third down, right? So it's better than nothing, right? He didn't shadow him, but he would face him on third down um, for certain packages that they had there. But check this out, right? Sean Clifford is not Joe Burrow. As dynamic as KJ Hamler is, I honestly believe he would torch Jeffrey Okuda. I think he's just too fast for him and too quick, right? So Jeffrey Okuda right now is getting baked off the line of scrimmage, but Sean Clifford is locked in on one guy. Now look at this. Uh, comes the balance. Boom. Look at look at the space already created that quick. For, look, Jeffrey Okuda got muscle relaxed. Look. Uh, if that's Joe Burrow, he goes through his reads real quick, hits KJ Hamler right here, and this is probably a big gainer. Right? Look at this space created. I'm not making this up. This is the kind of stuff that you don't get to see if you don't go against a dynamic QB wide receiver duo. Let's check out another one. All right, here we go again. Man coverage against KJ Hamler. Very much in the mold of those explosive receivers that I've mentioned before that we've seen AJ Terrell go against, Devontae Smith, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Waddle, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, guys like that, right? Once again, in breaking route, right? Quick slant here. Akuda damn near pulls the rip cord. Look at this. Boom. Look, he got faked out, and there really wasn't even an, uh, a complete jab. Look, boom. Barely jabbed him right there. Okuda goes way out there past the hash. Now, look at this. This would have been super bad because he would have cut up under this, right, if Sean Clifford had enough time. You see Chase Young bearing down on him. You got Chase Young on the team, too, making shit easy for you. But he would have cut under this right here, and he probably was gone. Then what will we have said? It's a game of inches, man. That's what I'm saying. Game of inches. He cut under that. Okuda was straight smoked off the line of scrimmage. Again, same move. Boom. We don't know what it is, man, to have a, a dynamic QB wide receiver and hit a guy like this. I got these are just the questions, right? I just don't know. I'm maybe he doesn't, right? Maybe he locks up KJ Hamler or something like that. But we just don't know because we did not get a chance to see it. You cannot judge someone just because you saw them go against the best, right? The best on the best. The best QB with the best wide receiver. And this guy doesn't really get to do that. Right? He's going against a mediocre quarterback and a, a dynamic receiver who they just can't get him the ball. But even though the guy's beating him off the line of scrimmage, right? All right, here we go again. Man coverage against Nico Collins, who I think works more in his wheelhouse. Nico Collins has build-up speed. I think he does have some some deep speed, but I don't think it's anything earth-shattering like we've seen from a Jamar Chase or or Jerry Judy or Devontae Smith. But he's a bigger receiver, right? So Okuda running a 4-4-8 and a 4-5-0 is not going to be that damning going against a guy like this, right? So we get to see something like this, right? Mm, I like it. Not bad. Not bad at all. Opens it up, right? Nice crossover steps there. Stays in phase. Shoots the – I love that right there, right? How many times I do this and we always see people shoot the wrong hand. But there you go. Left hand to the right shoulder pad. Kind of slips off a little bit, but we see the strength of Nico Collins here. Now, I've seen – like, this happened to A.J. Terrell in the Ohio State game, actually, right? With Austin Mack going up over him. But that's – Austin Mack being thrown to by Justin Fields. This dude has Shea Patterson throwing to him in a, in a game of inches where Shea, Shea, Shea could have just put it up maybe a little bit more shallower. In a game of inches, look, he got mossed, right? You got rossed, mossed, whatever you want to call it right there. Game of inches, didn't get his foot down. But I still see it. Who's to say that that wouldn't happen with a better QB to wide receiver combination? This happened in the Clemson game too, and that also worked to his advantage. All right, so this is undoubtedly one of the ones from Jeffrey Okuda that the NFL looked at. But you're going against a bigger wide receiver who is not a good route runner, in my opinion. Not like, how would this be? So look right here. I already see some stuff, right? Coming off coming off the snap, he's not necessarily the best in me, right? If he's given a free release, we've seen it with the KJ Hamler. Nico Collins is not that good of a route runner. Look at him. He's already out position. If this is Jerry Judy with this type of spacing right off the line of scrimmage on an in-breaking route, He's going to torch Jeffrey Okuda doing this, right? He created some pretty good space, and he didn't do nothing. Thinking about being Jerry Judy, it's going to come at you a little bit faster, or Jamar Chase is going to come at you a lot faster, right? And then the angle is going to be much sharper. Look at him. He rounds this, this slant off. He just rounds it off. That allows Okuda to get back into the play, but he got back into the play. 
and he made the play. Now, technically, right, now this is the, what I hear, right? I had some lame tell me, like, oh, A.J. Terrell, uh, when he had those reps on Jamar Chase, you could have called it pass interference. Like I said before, if they don't call it, why the fuck are you talking about it, right? If we all play ball, we all get away with some shit, and we all sometimes don't get away with some shit. So it is what it is. But you wouldn't be able to call this a pass interference? That's clearly pass interference. The ball's not there. His hand's all over him, right? But it don't count. Right, because it wasn't called. This is a good play by Jeffrey Okuda. But I'm just saying, so you'll get that for A.J. Terrell's reps, but you won't hear that from Jeffrey Okuda's reps. All I'm saying is, please make it equal. That's all I'm saying. I just want shit to be fair out there. Shit is just not fair, and these sheeple will ride with whatever the media is saying, but nobody wants to play it right down the middle, except your boy right here, Murph Ball, in that top billing, baby. I'm always going to play it right down the middle. All right, here's another game of inches one, right? T. Higgins. Uh, this was the game that Jeffrey Okuda submitted himself as a third pick in a draft. This was a very good game for him. But was it one that he was set up to have a good game? Because check this out right here, right? Look at him. He's beat off the line right here from T. Higgins, at least in the transition, right? So they're running a, running a nine. Running a nine, and he's beat. Now, look, I don't know what happened right here. I, I don't have a replay of it where they show how he got this type of separation. But a game of inches. He's getting beat vertically as well. Just barely didn't get that in there. Barely didn't get that in there, but it, I, I saw the catch, and I saw the separation, but boom, that's what happened right there, right? So he made his name off of T. Higgins, but look at T. Higgins. This ain't right. Something wasn't going on with it. Look at that shit right there. He's air sleeping. He's done. His helmet came off. Look at it. He can barely get up. Either he, either he haven't done core workout in 10 years or something's wrong with that man's head. Look at him. He on that weekend, that Bernie shit. Look at him. Uh, he's sleeping. Air sleeping. So, but look, check it out. He's beat. T. Higgins going up over him. So what happens if T. Higgins, right, is not quite loopy in the head? Does he have a better game? And the same thing as well. T. Higgins is not some type of dynamic route runner. He's a bigger guy that works in Okuda's wheelhouse. I would imagine that Okuda's probably faster than him. And um, Justin Ross as well, who he went against. These are just bigger receivers. I wanted to see him against some dynamic guys. So I'm just saying it just leaves a lot to be desired to me, uh, the type of schedule that he had. And that's what I. That's that's all I'm saying. Like I said 50 million times, I love Jeffrey Okuda. I just don't understand how it's fair that uh, – A.J. Terrell is judged off of Jamar Chase and, and, and what happened right there when we haven't seen Okuda be put in that type of position. Because I'll be honest with you, I think Jamar Chase would have done the same shit to Jeffrey Okuda. And it may have been worse because I'm not sure he can run with Jamar Chase. And I know A.J. Ter Terrell can run with Jamar Chase. As we've seen, he was right there with Jamar Chase. He just didn't make the play. But it is what it is. I want out there, if you're unbiased, let me know how that's fair. And let me know the dynamic receivers that we've seen Jeffrey Okuda face, the dynamic QB wide receiver combination. We've seen A.J. Terrell. Well, people talk that dumb ACC shit. Man, come on. Y'all kidding me. Do y'all watch football or do you skim it? He's played against Auburn. He's played against Texas A&M. He's played against Debo Samuel, Shy Smith, and Brian Edwards at South Carolina for three years. He don't just he does not just play ACC guys. What are you talking about? We've seen him play at Alabama twice. He played against Jerry Judy, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, and Henry Ruggs. Jeffrey Okuda never played against any of those guys. He never played against Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson and Terrace Marshall. He never played that. These guys, he's played a much tougher, stiffer competition than Jeffrey Okuda has. There's just nothing like that in the Big Ten right now. The Big Ten, to me, is known for great defenses, not great offensive personnel. The team that's known for great offensive personnel is his own team. So, right, so we get to see him go against those guys in practice. I love that. But the same thing with A.J. Terrell. He gets to go against the guys who – Okuda made a name off of T. Higgins and Justin Ross. He saw those guys every day for, for two years for Justin Ross and for three years for T. Higgins. So, I mean, what are we doing here, right? Not to mention Florida State has Tamar and Terry and guys like that in Miami with the guys that they have. Like, don't do the ACC shit, man. Don't skim football. Just watch it, all right? So, there you have it. It is what it is right there. I love Jeffrey Okuda. I just want to know how is it fair, all right? That being said, thank you. Make sure you like Comment, subscribe, do all that jazz right there. It's your boy Murph Baldwin, the Underground King, top billing sports, and I am out. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.